Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about silver and the art of pearl clutching over the spot price. As always, none of this is financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor. I am a voice on YouTube sharing my approach to holding precious metals like gold and silver as savings in a well-diversified portfolio. Lastly, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Now, let's jump in. Since 2020, the silver spot price has experienced significant volatility, trading in a range between $12 and $30 per ounce. Initially, prices surged to near $30 in mid-2020, driven by pandemic-induced economic uncertainties and a rush for safe haven assets. Long-time stackers looked for a return of prices to 2011 levels, and speculators piled in. It was inevitable our piles of silver were going to be worth a fortune. Only, they didn't. Subsequently, the price retreated and fluctuated, driven by a myriad of reasons, including United States fiscal policy, the strengthening dollar, inflation caused by both supply chain issues and money printing, rising interest rates, and varying industrial demand. The oscillation in spot price over the last four years has whipsawed stackers and speculators positioning for a sustainable break above $30, only to see silver sentiment inevitably change in direction to head back down towards $20. Let's zoom out and look at the time between 2011 and 2024. The silver spot price experienced significant volatility during this time, influenced by various economic, geopolitical, and market factors. After reaching a peak near $49 per ounce in April 2011, prices declined due to the recovery from the global financial crisis, leading to reduced investment demand for precious metals as safe haven assets. Over the following years, silver prices were impacted by the strengthening U.S. dollar, global economic growth, and fluctuating industrial demand, particularly from sectors like electronics, solar energy, and automotive industries. We covered the chart of silver's last four years in a recent video, so we won't dig very deep into it here. I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you're interested. At that time, I described the wedge silver has been in and how the time was coming for spot price to make a decisive break to the upside or down. I think with the recent move above that wedge, my confidence is rising that silver spot wants to go higher. However, I am worried that price is moving into a war zone of potential selling pressure, where former buyers took silver in size only to see price reverse lower. If we are going to move through this price demilitarized zone and eventually higher in a sustainable way, we really need to see some time put in in this immediate range, ideally testing that former resistance level to establish a new floor, much like gold has done in recent months. If we don't establish a floor here, I think silver stackers run the risk of price retreating once again. This is bad for stackers both established and new. Wise stackers have been dollar cost averaging into silver on a regular cadence, accumulating more metal when prices and premiums were lower. But all markets thrive on new money showing up to the party and nothing advertises a good old fashioned silver kegger like price breaking out to the upside. It is this moment when risk is highest, especially with fresh investors establishing positions in size anticipating prices to continue higher. For as much as I welcome that action, what if everyone is wrong? What if the Widowmaker appears again, slamming price down and leaving folks instantly underwater? I get it. There are moments when the silver market is the ultimate machine of good times. Our silver bags are full. This time is different. We'll go up forever. We can't possibly lose. And the band plays on. But the harsh reality is that the silver market isn't a machine of good times. It is a machine of cruelty designed to do one thing, eviscerate you and your bags of silver. It waits in the tall grass, ready to take the weakest hands first. 
This is why investors wax poetic about the moments of peak volatility in the metal and the prices it creates. But the facts would suggest the reality is different for the vast majority of stackers. When I look at those facts, I think if you aren't prepared to accumulate slowly and hold for many, many years, the facts suggest that you will lose money in silver. Stackers ignore this reality at their own peril. So how am I reading the proverbial tea leaves when it comes to the factors positively and negatively impacting silver? Let's break it down. Inflation. I believe that the inflation we saw related to the pandemic is gone from the system. That inflation was largely driven by global supply chain issues. I think few appreciated how delicate supply chains were, and that has become the origin story for the inflation that we're seeing today. Some will call it money printing, but a large part of the Infrastructure Bill and Chips Act is about investment in ensuring that the United States is competitive and secure in the future. This means onshoring critical capabilities and industries like the fabrication of semiconductors and the production of medicines. These examples didn't go offshore in a short amount of time, and they won't return quickly either. This is inflation that is here to stay. I'm not concerned about this inflation. However, it likely will be a net positive for silver. Monetary policy and interest rates. Personally, I think that the Federal Reserve deserves credit for the manner in which they have navigated adjusting rates to extinguish the inflation caused by supply chain issues during the pandemic. I understand it is unpopular to give Chairman Powell credit of any kind, but he has pulled off the first phase of a post-pandemic and low interest rates reset. The precious metal space is full of conspiracy theory and doom, and while the narrative might drive bullion sales, it's the kind of black and white thinking that gets us nowhere. That being said, our government can't afford the interest payments on its debts at 5 and 1.5%. Interest rates need to come down and will continue to inflate our way out of debt, much like a 30-year mortgage does. I'm concerned with the debt. It is large in an exasperating kind of way. However, lower rates will be a net positive for silver as the value of the dollar continues to decline and hard assets like silver should see the benefit. We're still the best house in a bad neighborhood, and the dollar will continue to be the reserve currency for the world. No matter how much precious metals maxis insist the dollar will come crashing down, I don't believe it will. Investor sentiment and market speculation. I can't think of an instance where silver isn't a volatile asset, and that volatility will always appeal to fast money. I believe we're at the confluence of a second industrial revolution, and silver will have a place at the table when it comes to the ongoing electrification of the world. Narrative about a collapsing dollar, the collapse of the country, the relationship between paper and physical silver will continue to whipsaw investors susceptible to acting out of fear instead of thoughtful planning for realistic situations. I think this is a wash for silver, mostly because it isn't how I operate in this market. Silver is a savings tool, not an investment. This is to say that it is me against my spending habits more than me against the global decline of the United States, that's probably a good place to break on this one. Silver is on the move, and it is a good time to remind yourself why you are stacking an asset like silver. I hope this walk through my own reasons and thoughts was helpful in challenging or confirming your own reasons to stack silver. If it was, if you learned something, or if you just totally disagree, let me know in the comments. Thanks for the time. Cheers.